have a lot of, and pay out a lot of cash. That's the terrifying part about blackmail, Watson. The victim is afraid to fight the accusation no matter how false. Once the accusation is made, the name is smeared, and sometimes his life is ruined. Well, if Sir George didn't commit these murders, what fiend did? I rather think they're not the work of any one man. Oh, come Holmes. You don't expect me to believe there's a whole organization going about killing people and, and chopping off their fingers. No, that's possible, quite possible. Well, whoever's behind all this thing must be out of his mind. On the contrary, my dear fellow. If my assumptions are correct, this little scheme has behind it the most brilliant and ruthless intellect the world has ever known. You don't mean Professor Moriarty? I do. Oh, steady, Holmes, you've got him on the brain. This is the third time in as many months you've suspected him of unsolved crimes. He's dead, you know. Is he? Is he? You know he is. He was hanged in Montevideo well, over a year ago. I know that someone was hanged in Montevideo under that name. But I'll stake my reputation that Moriarty is alive and here. Now, in London. Hello? Yes, but Dr. Watson, wait a minute. You me? Well, yes. This is Dr. Watson speaking. No, no, I'm afraid I've retired. I don't practice anymore. What? Oh, that's a, a different thing. An emergency care. Well, just a minute. Yes? Yes, well, see if she's not moved. Remember that. Don't touch it till I get there. Fractured kiss in, in the Carlos Mews. Heavy woman. Fourteen stone. Oh. Dust. <coughs> Fourteen stone. Oh. It's the sort of person who would hoist herself up on a stool to feed the canary. There ought to be a law against fat people keeping little dicky birds. Well, time's not been very long. I haven't used their bag since I bought little Amelia. What's her name in the world? You're up to be an attractive child. Oh, who wouldn't with a name like Amelia? What Amelia? Amelia. <laughs> Professor Moriarty. Not that I wish to appear inquisitive, but to what am I indebted for the pleasure of this visit? Scotland Yard will be interested. It's very convenient for me to have Scotland Yard think that I'm still dead in Montevideo. I never dreamed of fooling you. Thank you. The thought occurs to me, Mr. Holmes, that there are some advantages in living within the law. They are very comfortably fixed they are. As I get on in life, the little comforts appeal to me more and more. Oh, I beg your pardon. Won't you sit down? Thank you. And now, Professor Moriarty, what can I do for you? Everything that I have to say to you has already crossed your mind. And my answer has no doubt crossed yours. That's final. What do you think? I shall not rest until you are hanged for the finger murders. There's no proof, you know. No, not a shred. But I have you. I could turn you over to the police here and now. You could? If you did, 
You would never see Dr. Watson again. Oh, the telephone call. Quite. I rather assumed you had taken some such precaution. Or I should have snatched up a revolver and indulged in a fit of heroics when you came in. Very smart, aren't you? Not smart enough. Or I should have anticipated you. But if any harm comes to Dr. Watson, I shall seek you out. I shall not rest until I find you, and when I do... No harm will come to Dr. Watson this time. But I can't answer for the future. Mr. Holmes, I should strongly advise you to drop this case. Don't be silly. Think it over. We've had many encounters in the past. You hope to place me on the gallows. I tell you, I shall never stand up on the gallows. But if you are instrumental in any way in bringing about my destruction, you will not be alive to enjoy your satisfaction. And we shall walk together through the gates of eternity, hand in hand. What a charming picture that would make. Yes, wouldn't it? You know, I really think it might be worth it. You race it, get tons of air. And strong enough to hang yourself. How many more times since I tell you I don't want your filthy shoelaces or your company? Shoelaces, Captain? Nothing impertinent. Run along, my good man, or I'll give you in charge. Shoelaces, Captain? Shoelaces, Captain? You're for poor bloke. <laughs> What's only got one arm? Any luck with Mr. Holmes? You can read his obituary in tomorrow's papers. Come in. I was um, just going out to look for you. Look for me? What for? Well, you don't think I know my way about? Well, you're right, I don't. Blast all practical jokers, anyhow. Know where I've been? On a wild goose chase. Exactly. There's no such number in McArdle's muse. Some fool's idea of a joke. Did you, uh, did you see anyone? No, nobody especially. Only a whining old idiot selling bootlaces. It was some beggar, wasn't he? Stuck you like good death. Oh, how do you know? And finally I left you for someone who looked like better pickings. Someone, my dear Watson, was Professor Moriarty himself. What? Just called on me. Moriarty here and you let him go? But you must be out of your mind. Why? Well, he bluffed me into believing that he was holding a friend of mine as hostage. Friendly old who? Oh, nobody very important, just a fat, lazy fellow. Medical man, I believe. Medical man? Do I know him? Uh, yes, I think you do. Uh, a fellow by the name of Watson. Watson? Watson never heard. Who? Me? I'm afraid so, old fellow. Your street hawker's job was to do away with you in a certain contingency. And you let Moriarty go because of me? I had no choice. You can't afford to lose you, old fellow. Well, it's very decent of the old chap, I must say, but... Uh, well, uh, I wish you'd nabbed him. We shall, never fear. I know the motive for the finger murder. All I have to find out now is the method used with the blackmail victims. Method? Yes. How does Moriarty get them to the scene of the crime? How does he plant those severed fingers on them? And how does he scare them into believing that... Uh, they may have committed those atrocious murders themselves? Curious. Very curious. Huh? Curious? What's curious? That window in the empty house across the street. First floor front. Huh? What's wrong with it? It's open. Oh, well, shouldn't it be open? Well, it wasn't open half an hour ago. I was taking my life on that. Oh, it's not our business. So it's stay open. <laughs> I, uh, wonder if you'd go over, old fellow, and see what's the matter. Oh, trespassing. Against the law. Hmm? Well, well, I'll go myself. Oh, well, if you're going to put it like that, ridiculous waste of time. Think about shutting windows at this hour of the night. Yeah, you better take this torch. Well, take what? To... <laughs> Dignified job for a doctor. Dr. Watson, the torch bearer. And what do you propose to do? Sit in a comfortable chair, I suppose, and read a good book. That's a very good idea. Yeah, it's a very good idea. While I play night watchman, you have a nice read. Mm -hmm. Good night. Have a good time. Have a good time. What do you mean? Oh, a 
burst here. Ooh. Real little thing to keep about the house. Ooh. Must have been a pet. It's comfortable reading a book. shoot you a second ago. Oh, not me, my dear fellow. Merely the bust of Julius Caesar. Incidentally, you may have noticed that uh, all through the ages, prominent men have prominent noses. Oh, I'm afraid we're in for terrible trouble again with Mrs. Hudson. Windows smashed, plaster all over the floor. Get up, you. Corporal Williams, Middlesex Regiment. Discharged from the army as physically unfit. Yeah. Papers seem in order. Now, Corporal William, you've seen service in the Far East, haven't you? The East? I thought so. Look at his complexion, Watson. Yellow as saffron. He's been taking atabrine. Cure for malaria. Sniper, aren't you? Sniper? Hmm. Why did you try to kill me? I had to kill him. I had to. Oh, snap out of it. Stop it, Watson. He's shamming. No, he isn't. Who told you to kill me? She told me. She told you? She told me I couldn't miss. Well, luckily you did miss, you murderer. You're a murderer, Watson. Listen, Corporal Williams. She told you you had to do it, didn't she? I had to do it. I've got it, Watson. I've got it. Got what? The method used in the finger murders. Well, what is it? Hypnotism, my dear fellow. Hypnotism. And it wasn't against his nature. That's the devilish part of it. They picked a man for that purpose whose job was sniping. Who were they? Professor Moriarty and his finger murderers. William spoke of a woman. I think you will find that she asked him home tonight for a drink. Nice quiet rooms, soft lights, music. You got it all pat, Mr. Holmes. What's the lady look like? Oh, uh, a pretty, nice figure, blonde, lustrous eyes. Oh, really? Got a phone number? Oh, so. Williams will give us her address. Look after him, Gregson. Don't let anyone come near him. He's our key witness in the finger murders. Well, I hope you're guessing right, Mr. Holmes. Get up, Williams. Now, go with Inspector Gregson anywhere he tells you. Come on. Yeah. Ring me as soon as he comes to himself, will you? I will. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Well, if you believe that fellow Williams was hypnotized, I suppose you think Sir George Fenwick was hypnotized too. Yeah, I'm quite sure of it. Have a cup of tea? Thanks, old boy. Nothing to eat. Well, why didn't these people make Sir George do the murder himself? Because they didn't want to get him hanged. They, uh... They wanted to blackmail him. Well, who do you think the actual murderer is? One of Moriarty's gang. 
A diabolically simple technique. Kill a woman? Yes, 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 but why cut off the fingers? My dear fellow, don't you understand? The severed finger is what links the blackmail victim to the murder. He wakes, finds the grisly thing in his pocket. Doesn't know how he got there. He's no idea that he's been hypnotized. For all he knows, he may have committed the atrocious crime during some dreadful lapse of sanity. In that state, when he's utterly demoralized, he... Blackmailers take over, is that it? Undoubtedly. You see, they swear that they saw him commit the murder. And being human, the victim will pay anything rather than stand trial on a charge that will make his very name loathsome. Well, it all fits in if you believe in hypnotism. The only possible explanation. Do you think the hypnotist is that uh, woman with the blonde hair and the lustrous eyes, the <laughs> woman you invented? I didn't invent her. I saw her. What are you talking about? That woman, my dear Watson was with Sir George when he left Pembroke House. I saw her there. I shall see her again, and Williams will lead me to her. That's why it's so important to keep him safe. He will identify her. Hmm. Well, yes, Inspector Gregson? What? I'll get every constable in the district. Yes, I'll be over at once. What's happened, Holmes? Williams is missing. Great Scott! Come on. Lorry crashed into Gregson's car. During confusion, Williams disappeared. Escaped, eh? No, kidnapped. To keep him from talking when he came to. You don't think that Moriarty... Well, Moriarty? Anything is possible. Williams! Dead. You see? Anything is possible. Oh, good morning, Professor Moriarty. You startled me. I'm dressing another dolly, a dear little nurse. Is there anything wrong with your finger? Just a splinter. Nasty thing, splinters. Most trying. One can't be too careful, but I'll get it out for you. I have the very instrument to help you. Sharp enough to split a hair. Put those tools away until they're needed. But they're not tools, sir. They're instruments. Put them away. Is Lydia in? Yes. But really, you should let me... Get dressed. Holmes and Watson just left Baker Street for the Mesmer Club. Mesmer Club? The meeting place of all the top hypnotists in London. Do you suppose that Mr. Holmes is on to our method? Did he suspect? It's merely a suspicion. It's our business to see that it ends there. I hope you're right. William has passed away before he could talk, remember? What do you want me to do? Go to the Mesmer Club, meet Holmes, and induce him to come back here. Isn't that a bit dangerous? Every meeting with Sherlock Holmes is potentially dangerous. However, you say he didn't see your face at Pembroke House. And how would you suggest I get Mr. Holmes to accompany me here? Kidnap him? Oh, no. Holmes has one weakness. His insatiable curiosity. If you can arouse that, you can lead him anywhere. It's up to you to take advantage of any opportunity that may arise. Uh, this way, please, gentlemen. I'll tell Dr. Ronslow that you're here. Thank you. And this is the Mesmer Club. If you ask me, hypnotism is a lot of mumbo-jumbo. Oh, come now, Watson. As a medical man, you must admit that hypnotism has its place in modern science. That may be, but 90% of hypnotists are crooks of the worst kind. Nothing more than a lot of charlatans exploiting weak-willed morons. Ah, oh. Dr. Onslow, I believe. Uh, happy to meet you, Mr. Holmes. Uh, your brother Mycroft suggested I might be of help to you. Uh, he's a valued member of our little group of uh, charlatans and crooks. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't know you were listening. Oh, behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. My friend, Dr. Watson. Ah, oh, delighted. Oh, you know? I wonder now. You see, we're in the midst of a little experimental session at this very moment, if you'd uh, care to join us. 
Oh, certainly, certainly. I'd be very instructive. Oh, well, will you follow me? Yes. Thank you. I was going to go behind the blossom of chemicals. Increasing his patience. But today, the therapeutic value of hypnotism, as we now call it, is conceded by innumerable physicians. Especially is it of value in surgical cases where the administration of local or of general anesthetic is inadvisable. Inadvisable poppycock. <laughs> For the sake of latecomers, I may say that I have placed this subject under profound hypnosis. In this condition, he can feel no pain, even under applications which normally would be excruciating. Excruciating? Oh. Excuse me, please. Carter, you are having a peaceful sleep. You feel nothing. Your arms and your hands are without sensation. Mowbray, the long needle. Carter, give me your right hand. As you observe, the needle has been thrust completely through the subject's hand. No feeling, no pain. This lack of feeling is the one infallible test of profound hypnosis. Nonsense. Fill us full of drugs. Well, isn't he? Definitely not, Doctor. Wake up, Carter, wake up. You feel well and rested, remember? No pain anywhere. Wake up, wake up. I say, when are you going to begin? All through, Carter. Stand up. This way, sir. And, uh, are these all the people that come here? Oh, no, no, no. Others keep dropping in all the time. I suppose it's all right for those who believe in it, but of course, I'm a professional man myself. Then you don't believe in hypnotism, Dr. Watson. Oh, I don't deny that there are certain types of hysterical feeble-minded people who go under if you point your finger at them. But anyone with, a, with an ounce of character... <laughs> <laughs> How right you are. You see right through our little artifices, don't you, Doctor? Right through, my dear sir. Right, right through. Right so. But with the feeble-minded, as you say... Uh, uh, excuse us, Mr. Oh, Holmes. Oh, uh, Step over here, won't you? Certainly, sir. Anything to oblige. <laughs> Let me show you how easily we charlatans uh, take advantage of them. Now, sit down, Doctor. Now, we set a thing like this in motion. It's wonderful, the attraction on the feeble-minded, of course. The continuous motion, if they just let themselves follow it. Of course, you could stare at it till doomsday, Dr. Watson, with no effect at all. Still, it might make you a little drowsy, like the white ribbon of road at night when you're driving. The rhythm is smooth, unbroken, and the road goes on and on round and round, always the same, winding and winding. And you're drowsy, you're tired. Let the road come into you, as it were. The long road, the smooth road, the road to sleep, sleep. Open your eyes. Stand up. Turn around. And now, Dr. Watson, you're on a holiday in Scotland. The country is amazingly beautiful. We're coming to a stream. It isn't deep. Better take your shoes and socks off. your trouser. Uh, that'll do. The other leg is waterproof. Turn around. Mind the pedals. Sit 
come. Wake up now. There you are, see? What did I tell you? It didn't work with me. Why, nobody with an ounce of carry. I think your niece is. Going to laugh at Watson, she's here. Who? Oh, the woman you're looking for? Yes, I'm going to meet her. Perhaps I can induce her to take me to Moriarty. Do you think it's wise, Holmes? It may not be wise, but it's essential. After all, I've held me on with Moriarty in the past. But isn't it dangerous? She might be a hypnotist. My will isn't stronger than hers. I deserve to be hypnotized. I feel I must protest, Dr. Onslow. I was told this was a gathering of serious students of a great science. And I find myself in a company of buffoons. Oh, my dear madam. Ellis and Esdale brave. Were those men martyrs for the truth? That you may laugh over your childish, cruel tricks. I must say I'm in complete agreement with you, madam. This was most unnecessary performance, Dr. Onslow. Beg your pardon, sir. My name is Holmes, Sherlock Holmes. At your service, madam. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Holmes. I'm afraid I've created a rather embarrassing situation. But you see, I'm interested in the serious study of hypnotism. So am I, too. Perhaps we have something in common, Mr. Holmes. Perhaps we have. Do you join me for a cocktail at Pembroke House? I should be delighted. Good. Thank you. I didn't know there was such a pleasant place in London. It was so nice of you to suggest our coming here. I thought a little pick-me-up would do us good. You mean you thought I looked... Uh... I like the way you look. Thank you. I suppose I did lose my head a little at the Mesmer Club. But you see, hypnotism 